This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance provides high quality instructor led training videos for desktop, IT, and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. So in this demo, what I'd like to do is give you a quick example of what we do when we create a private cloud. So we're using System Center Virtual Machine Manager to create the cloud and the cloud resources. So let's go ahead and bring up here the uh, System Center Virtual Machine Manager console. And as I bring that up, uh, if you're not already familiar with the VMM console, the basic layout is your primary navigation is in the lower left corner. So we can go through the various different services and virtual machines that might exist in your environment that you manage through VMM, and that includes, you'll notice here, a listing of clouds. So we'll come back to that. We also have an area of fabric. Fabric resources are things like our storage, some of our networking elements, uh, the host systems, core infrastructure elements that we're going to utilize. We also have a library. The library is reusable, redeployable resources like VHDs, ISO files, templates, and so on. Jobs will be an area where we can see any existing or running jobs. And as we do uh, certain things in the environment like creating new virtual machines or pushing out new services, these are jobs and they run in the background. And so we can always come here to see the status of those and maybe rerun them if necessary. And then lastly, the settings area of VMM will be where you just, as a cloud administrator or as a uh, VMM administrator, you can manage the general settings and behavior of the VMM environment as a whole. Now, we're going to stay, for this particular demo, we're going to stay right here in the VMs and services because a cloud is really a way of providing access to a business unit, perhaps, uh, providing them access to a slice of the services, a slice of the resources. And it is in the cloud that we're going to deploy virtual machines and services. So you'll see here there is a cloud already called Stock Trader, but I'm going to create a new one. So I can right click at this level to do Create Cloud, or you'll notice just like Office uh, 2010, we have a ribbon interface across the top. So uh, there's a button here to create a cloud as well. So either way, will get me to the same wizard, the Create Cloud wizard. So I'm going to specify a name for it. Let's say that this is going to be my investment banking division cloud. So that's what I'm going to call it. Now I go ahead and hit Next. Now, for the resources for the cloud, I could limit to a specific set of host groups when I create a cloud. Now, I've got groupings, or I could create groupings of host systems. The host systems are our Hyper-V hosts. I could have 100 Hyper-V hosts in my data center, but for those in my investment banking division that are going to get these cloud resources, perhaps I want to limit them to a subset of the hosts. Now, I'm not going to. I'm just going to specify all hosts. There will be other ways that I might want to limit a uh, cloud subscriber, if you will. So the cloud subscriber would be the business unit, in this case, investment banking division. They've come along and said, hey, we would like to subscribe and essentially be a tenant in your cloud data center environment. So we're going to slice that off. That's what we're doing when we create here a cloud. So for now, I'm not going to limit them to any specific hosts. I may instead want to limit them, and I can do that a little bit later. I might want to limit them to a certain amount of resource. Regardless of which host they're running on, I'll limit them by memory or CPU capability or storage. So let's go ahead and click Next. Now, in our environment, in our fabric, we may end up creating many different networks. And I would choose within this cloud which network are they going to be connected to. Now, the networks that you create are virtual networks or virtual switches, depending on how you want to describe them. Here, they are described as logical networks. But ultimately, they either get us connected into a completely isolated virtual environment, 
or they get us connected passing through the network cards of the hosts out onto the actual physical corporate network. And so depending on if we've got different corporate networks that we want to get them connected to, we would first have to create those logical connection points or logical networks that connect them to the real corporate network and then they'll show up in here and we can decide for a particular cloud which network do we want them connected to. So let's go ahead and hit next. Now as a part of the network we can also uh, allow them to utilize certain load balancing technologies that are built into the system. We'll do more of that, uh, more on that later. And same thing with virtual IP profiles. A virtual IP profile is something then that we can associate, uh, once we create them in our fabric, we can associate them so that there's a range of IPs uh, and sets of virtual IPs that are available to be utilized inside of that particular cloud. And the same would be true for storage classifications. We go into our fabric area down here and we create storage classifications with total capacities that are available. And I can specify which ones these cloud subscribers are allowed to utilize. Now, stored uh, specify stored VM path in read-only library shares. So the stored VM path would be a location, if I go ahead and click browse, uh, I can choose a library location and what I'm doing is I'm choosing, there are many shares that we can create in our library, shared folders. They could even be on different servers and so when we cover in more detail library elements, and library servers, we can see where and how we set those up and create them. Here what I'm doing is I'm specifying if one of these cloud users for the cloud that I'm currently creating, if they were to store a virtual machine, it would go in this particular share. And I could choose from several different shares if I had them. What does it mean to store a virtual machine? A virtual machine is typically running on a host system or it could be just turned off on a host system. But there is an option to store a virtual machine that we don't intend to use anytime soon. I don't want to delete it completely because I will probably use it again, but if I'm not going to use it anytime soon, I can take it off of a host system and store it in the library. Once it's stored in the library, I can rapidly redeploy it to any host and it has everything that it needs as a completely uh, contained and built virtual machine. It just needs to go on a host in order to actually execute. So I'm choosing here a location for that. And then if I wanted to, I can give users in this cloud access to other library resources. And I would specify here by clicking add which library shares I want them to have read-only access to. They can't copy anything new to, into these shares but they can pull down stuff they might need in order to create new virtual machines like ISO files and VHD files and so on. Whatever it is that we put in those shared folders as resources, I would give them read-only access to it. Then we get to capacity. Set the capacity for this cloud. What that really comes down to then is how do I want to limit this particular cloud that I'm creating? I want to put essentially quotas on there. Maybe I'm going to do it based on a number of CPUs currently set to unlimited. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to bump that down. Maybe I want to limit them to 20 virtual CPUs being utilized at any time. Okay, what does that mean? Well, when you start up a virtual machine or you configure a virtual machine, you specify how many virtual CPUs you want to assign to it. So it's the equivalent of, say, I, I have two uh, actual CPUs or four actual CPUs, but we designate them in the settings of a virtual machine. Well, if every virtual machine has four in this cloud, then with a total assigned capacity of 20, then I could just have five virtual machines running, each with four CPUs, or I can bump them down to two CPUs each, and then I'll be able to have 10 virtual machines running at any given time. Now, memory is another way that I could limit them in gigabytes. So let's say I want to limit them to no more than 64 gigabytes of RAM in our cloud environment. I could also limit their storage. Uh, I could also limit how many virtual machines. If I was less concerned about the capacity in terms of CPUs, maybe I want to limit them 
uh, to no more than 10 virtual machines. So there's a number of different ways that I can limit. There's also this concept of custom quota points. That's a way that, that we can get into in more detail later that specifies um, how every template that is used to create a new virtual machine can have a, a quota, uh, a, a number of points assigned to it. So we create templates of virtual machines that people in the cloud can deploy based on these templates. And maybe a 4 gig of RAM machine is worth two quota points. And a 2 gig of RAM machine is worth one quota point. And an 8 gig of RAM machine is worth four quota points. I don't know. But as they go in and they start to deploy virtual machines based on these templates, the points begin to add up. And we could limit them that way instead. You probably wouldn't limit using every single one of these, but it's flexible depending on how I want to provide capacity to this cloud subscriber. And really what that comes down to is how much money are they paying? Right? You probably have some sort of a subscription model in place so that your business units pay via their cost center. And um, you know, if they need more capacity, then they come to an agreement with you and pay a little bit more, and then you can come in here and bump this up for them, giving them a little bit of extra space, if you will. Now, let's go ahead and hit Next. I can also limit them based on capability. Perhaps for this particular cloud, they're only going to be using Hyper-V hosts. But I could specify, no, they are also allowed to deploy virtual machines into our ESX hosts and our Zen server hosts as well. So it just depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Go ahead and hit Next. And then we can see just a summary here. And I'll go ahead and click Finish. And it will generate and create a new cloud. Remember, I called it the Investment Banking Division. You can see that right there. And that becomes an environment that's a bit more controlled. OK, so I'll have to come up with a uh, unique name for the, uh, for the library share. But what it's going to do is create for me uh, this cloud. And it's a holding place for resources that anybody in this cloud that gets assigned to this cloud uh, can deploy um, resources into. And they're going to be restricted based on the capacity that we've specified right here. So that's just a quick look at how we build out a, a, a cloud environment and assign out resources within our data center. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.